Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an unboxing video. Today I'm just going to have a quick look at what's inside this box here that came in an Airfix mystery box. I've looked around online, didn't see many reviews of this kit, so I thought, yeah, give this a try. See how we go. I am just to make, well, I am filming this on a phone. I do not currently have a decent camera or microphone set up, nor do I have any way of decent properly filming it or editing it, more specifically. So... Please bear with me if there's any technical issues with it. Okay, if the sound's a bit off, there's not a lot I can do about that at the moment. Okay, so let's have a look. So, the Airfix 135th M7 Priest. It's an Airfix boxing. It's an Academy kit, however, as are most of Airfix's kits. Or 135th Armour kits, as a few people pointed out in the comments on the previous video. I did know that at the time, I just forgot to mention it in the video. But never mind. So let's have a look. Slightly unusual looking vehicle. Boxes, bit of standard size, you can see the bit of size of the box there. Good box art, as usual on FX kits, they don't, they've always done good box art. Uh, the end of the box, not much on there. So on there, on that side you've got, where's it gone? Yeah. There we are, a little bit of info about the vehicle. And a little bit of detail about the two options you've got in there. One sort of khaki brown colour, one the green. And a little bit about paints. And if you're interested in the Airfix Flying Hours Club, you've got three Flying Hours for this as well. So that's nice. Okay, so that's that's the box. Well, let's, let's have a look at what's next. So, start with the instructions. Again, black and white picture of the box art. So, yeah, and straight in there. So you've got usual bits and bobs. Don't eat the parts, don't sniff glue, it's not a toy, that sort of thing. Various exceptions there to see what to do, how to do things. If you're a newbie, that's fine. Not everyone has been doing this for years. Some people are just new, small children maybe. If you are a small child watching this, have one of your parents or someone help you with it. But into the into the instructions. So we've got there, assembling the suspension bogies. Forgot the name there, of which there are six. Fairly straightforward there, then attaching them to lower hull, and then we're to whatever this is. I'm guessing something to do with the engine or the transmission. Next stage, again attaching that to what looks like a floor plate. A few bell bits being attached, and then attaching more stuff to the front of the hull. Looks like the drive sprockets, are they? No, I can remember their drive sprockets or idlers. They're the ones that drive the wheels, though. So attaching all that. Attaching that suspension uh, transmission thing to the inside. Might want to paint all this before you attach anything on top of it because it's going to be simpler. It's going to be much more difficult to paint afterwards, I suspect. Next stage, whole page is all about the gun. So it looks like a fair bit of detail here. Goes together lots of parts, so just pay attention, make sure you're not missing anything, make sure everything lines up properly. And then it says to attach the whole thing into the hole again there. Again, you might want to leave that off because it's... Or at least get that one painted first before you glue that on top. Because it's going to be easier. Bit of black and white photo there, or black and white CAD image of what it looks like. But it's not that helpful. It's not a very big image and it's all in kind of monochrome grey. So not that helpful. But it's nice they made an effort at least. Uh, next page, again, a few more bits. Bits being attached there. Top view there. Colour call-outs wise, it looks like all of this is one colour, so that should make painting all of that bit fairly straightforward. Next bits, it's assembling the sides, uh, or the sides and front of the hull, which goes on top of the chassis. Again, it's, it's an open-topped vehicle, so you're going to see most of the you're going to see all the detail basically inside it. So again, you might want to paint the various bits before as you're going along. Most of it's going to be one colour, but uh, things like what we got here might be radio boxes. Looks like a couple of rifles there for the crew. They're going to be different colours, so just take your time, no rush. Get in there with the brushes. Probably not going to do that sort of thing with an airbrush easily. Uh, more details on here on the back plate of it, the engine deck, I think it is. A few bits on the back there. I'm assuming the, the exhaust pipes are in there somewhere. I'm just guessing. That all the same one's got a couple of tools to put on top. Leave them off till the end, paint them separately. 
if, not, if nothing else, they're a slightly different colour, nice bit of wood effects on them, so that'll break up the colour on this because it's going to be a fairly mono, monotone colour, this thing. Next step, some stowage boxes and more tools on the back end. And then you're on to the back page. You've got attaching the top bit of the hull to the bottom bit where the gun is. Also assemble the machine gun. Looks like there's more than one option in the box, actually. So you can have other options there to so check your references. Uh, assembling the ammunition racks. Sorting them in. They're obviously they're going to be a completely different colour. Probably brass, I'm, I'm guessing there. I haven't looked. But whatever they are, they, they're going to, again, break up the colour scheme because it's going, that's the main problem with something like this. It's, it's mostly one colour. It's all in variations of the tones and maybe some weathering. You can go to town on it if you really want to. Tracks. They are the vinyl rubber band style ones. It looks like you attach them together with the old heated screwdriver on the stud sting rather than glue. Very old fashioned, but it does the job. Just don't burn yourself when you're doing it. Okay. And then you've got a sprue call outs or sprue maps even. So we've got two of them, look at that. Couple of small sprues, flexible tracks, there you And then you're into your colour options. So let's have a look there. Got that one, which is the brownish one, which is where is that? The C Battery, 78th Field Artillery Battalion, 2nd Armour Division, which is the US 7th Army in Germany in 1945. Nice big white star on the side there and on the front, so that breaks it up a bit. But as you can see, not a lot of colour variation in there. Then you've got this one, which is, what's this one? Uh, A Troop, 22nd Battery, 24th Field Regiment in the Royal Artillery in Italy, 1944. So that'll be a British one. And that's in a sort of darker green colour. Although it does have uh, nice red and white markings there and on there. So that breaks it up a bit, which is nice. And that's your all the instructions. Fairly straightforward. It doesn't, not too many steps. Should be, should go together fairly simply. So let's have a look at the sprues. First up, the hull. I've already opened the bags anyway, so I didn't want to be doing all the crinkly noises on camera. Although if you like that sort of thing, there's plenty of channels out there where you can listen to that sort of thing. Okay, so these, two of them obviously, just flexible vinyl or rubber. I've never had a problem with them. Some people hate them. That's fine, it's a matter of personal preference. Not a lot of detail on them, few little sink marks or moulding issues there but they're easy to cut off or sand off and if you're doing any kind of weathering or washes on it that's going to cover up at most of it the worst bits anyway but there you go there dead easy hull not too not not huge in fact how big is that have a look so just on just under 15 centimeters long about six inches thereabouts the underside, not sure if you can make these out. Quite a lot of riveting detail along here on the underside, which is nice, wasn't expecting that. A little bit on the side as well, but the traditional bathtub style hull. Yeah, nothing really to write home about. I'm sure it does, everything there. Let's see where you're attaching your suspension. Next up. these two first because they're smaller get them out of the way so these ones are for the machine guns so you get two of them on there but look at it plus their ammunition uh, cases mountings for it again looks like oops yeah fair number of small parts all like nice fairly good detail looks like small sprue attachments as well so I need a very fine pair of uh, nippers to get them off just tidy them up a bit, should be fine. And then you've got the other one, which has got jerry cans on it. Get back in shot. A couple of jerry cans, small bits. Looks like another option for a different gun. I don't think that's the one called out in the instructions, but you've got another one there for your spares if you want it. Next up, we have... Some of the larger sprues so there's three bags of sprues each bag has got two big sprues in it first one is it the same i think these might be the same 
Yes, they are. Yeah, so there's two of these. Put that up there. So you've got your yeah, suspension bogies. So three there, three there, so six there. Each side, so that will cover one side of the vehicle. Again, looks like fairly good detail in there. Hopefully this camera's focusing on it. Again, nothing wrong with that really. Bit of weathering in there, with paint, paint to be fine. Okay, fairly straightforward to build it. Next, another large sprue, which is, that's going to be the top surfaces of the hull. So the sides there. That'll be the engine deck at the back, that'll be the front. Well, yeah. Driver's hatch there, the gun, through, gun sticks out through there, obviously. Uh, that's the pulpit sort of thing with a machine gun one, which is apparently why it got its name. It's a machine gun that looks like the pulpit in a church, so it was nicknamed the priest by the British. That's apparently what it was, why it was called that. Fairly straightforward, lots of small things in there, so you have to be careful you don't break them getting them off or lose them when you do get them off. Next sprue we've got, that looks like the ammunition, ammunition cases, boxes they go in, more of the, oh, there we are, that's more upper plates, so that'll be a floor inside, I think the gun gets mounted on that. That'll be the rear, rear deck, or rear, Rear side wall, I've forgotten the word, back of it, the back end. Again, detail all looking pretty good, no problems there. One more bag, a couple more big sprues. So, what's this one? We've got more suspension bogies. Not sure if they're the same ones, they look, they look a bit different. So, not this might be for a different version. I think the lower hull might be based on a different vehicle. I think it's the M3 Lee. I think it did mention it in the instructions. Might have to check that. But yeah, you've got options there. So there might be different versions for different different types of suspensions. Uh, they look, what are they going to be? They're going to be track guards, I'm guessing. That'll be the front of the front of the hull. A couple more small bits there. Looks like tow towing cable attachment points or something don't think you get any kind of tow cable in this kit at least i didn't see in any box but i don't know whether the real vehicle had one anyway so that's academic really and the next one out the way this one appears to have all the parts for the gun i'll try and hold it in shot as well that would help wouldn't it okay so that is, is that the barrel that does a the uh, recoil system, one or the other. Uh, mounting there for it. Not sure if it's going to swivel from side to side or not when it's mounted. Didn't see any poly caps in there for doing that, if it is, so it might be fixed or it might just be elevating up and down. We'll find out when I get round to building it. So, yeah, lots. There's a lot of parts in this, more than I was expecting. And this is also where you got your little tools as well. So a little spade there, great big wrenches or hammers or whatever they are. Lots of bits and bobs in there. So again, plenty of detail. Is that the rifle? Oh yeah, you got the looks like you got the rifles for the crew there as well, a couple of those. So paint them a different colours, obviously. What else is there in the box? Not a lot else. Not a lot else. The only other thing in the box is the decal sheet, which is quite big for a fairly small 35th military vehicle. They're not generally known for having a lot of markings on them. Let's just see if I can hold this out so it's a bit yeah, better view of that. So you can see a white, the white stars on the left hand side, or the white marks if you do the American one, and the right hand side, the possibly a bit more colourful version for the British one. And again, they all look Good solid colours, everything looks nice and neat and tidy. Not a lot of not a lot of carrier film on them. The only problem with the white ones, not sure how thin that's gonna be if you're using that on, whether that's gonna cover the original paint colour underneath them. But it wouldn't be too difficult, I don't think, to actually mask bits off because that's just a straight rectangles. So 
So you can probably paint that by hand if you wanted to get to, if you wanted to try it. But there we are. That is the FX Academy 135th M7 Priest. Looks like a good kit. I'm looking forward to building it. It's a bit of an unusual vehicle, which ticks one of my boxes. I like to build things that are slightly odd. Uh, so yeah, not sure when I'll get around to building it, or even if if, if I'll film it. But uh, there you go. Fairly basic inbox review of that kit. If you like to see more of these sorts of reviews, let me know in the comments. If not, it's fine. Any constructive feedback is appreciated. I am completely new to this YouTube business. Just doing it for a bit of fun, really. So, I will leave you to the rest of your day. Right. Thank you for watching.